you to watch later. And if somebody else wants to see this, needs information. So my name is Paritosh Kumar, and I want you to I want to introduce Mark Keprecht. So we are kind of uh, running the course together. I'm on leave in the winter term, so Mark will step in. Uh, so most of your earlier part of Def Sport and experience, including pre-departure meeting, uh, working out, negotiating your arrangements of internship. Uh, is going to be with Mark, and then I'll take over in July. So I'll, we'll go through all the course requirements, everything. I also want to introduce Barbara, who's our departmental administrator, uh, Carrie and Susan. So they are in the Dev's main office. So you might need to contact them if there's any issues. So if uh, Susan generally takes care of the undergraduate stuff, if Susan is not there, Gary will be stepping in, so just want to introduce. Uh, but before we start with our formal presentation, I want to introduce you to Tess Whitman. So she's a former Dev student. So she did Devs 410. And uh, after 410, she started working with uh, Sustainable Kingston and uh, environmental organization here in Kingston. And last year, she supervised one of the Devs 410 student, Kim. Uh, Kim Jones worked with, uh, with Tess, and she, this year again, Sustainable Kingston is going to offer uh, one internship. Is that right, Tess? Yes. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll let Tess speak a little bit about her Devs 410 experience and then uh, what the work this summer might entail and what the organization does. So Tess, it's all yours. Thanks for the intro. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tess Whitman. Um, as Perry Tosh said, I was a dev student. I took the 410 course, I think, the summer of 2018. Um, and that was my first time ever working in a nonprofit. Um, I wasn't super sure what uh, like specialization and area I had wanted to focus on. So I found 410 super helpful in guiding me and where I wanted my career path to go. So I, uh, that summer, um, worked for Sustainable Kingston. I mostly did research um, for a grant that they had um, won. So I did research on Belleville and Brockville so they could do sustainability efforts there. Uh, and then actually at the end of my internship, I started working there full time. And now flash forward a couple of years, I am still working there. And now I, uh, now we take in more dev students that usually work under me. Uh, Sustainable Kingston, it's a pretty small nonprofit. There's three of us right now that work there. So that's why we take on um, one student, sometimes if we have four or five staff, depending on um, where we're at, we'll take on two. Um, Kim was our intern this past summer, and uh, the projects kind of change year to year, depending on where our focus is, where uh, our grant money is. So uh, we had kind of changed it a bit with Kim. So what she mostly worked on was uh, she helped with our like marketing efforts and our social media. We also ran some monthly webinars. So she helped with those and setting up and marketing those. Uh, and then a really big project she worked on. Uh, we usually go into local elementary schools and we teach them about how to recycle in Kingston and the three R's. And since we weren't able to do that, she actually turned the presentation into a video series. So the students could go to our website and still get the presentation online. Um, and Kim is actually still working with us um, and helping with some social media. And she's also next year going to help us put together a food waste series um, for students. So um, we are still, we're looking to take on one intern for next summer. It's still a little unclear uh, as to what it includes very specifically as this is a pretty like changing climate, um, but it often entails um, communications and marketing help, 
um, sometimes research. Um, usually we run these webinars, so it could be either running a webinar yourself, organizing blogs for our website, working on our newsletter. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. We also run a business sustainability program where we work with about 50 local businesses and helping them reduce their footprint and celebrate their successes online. So uh, part of it can be either uh, celebrating what they do, um, maybe like getting photos of things that they do, or running networking events where we get them all together, that sort of thing. Um, if anyone has any specific questions about Sustainable Kingston or um, maybe in the new year when I have more information about what the position could include, uh, you're always welcome to email me or if you have uh, 410 specific questions. Uh, I think it's a really great course and it um, was definitely the one that impacted me the most at Queens as it is uh, helped me in my career. <laughs> Um, yeah. So great. Thanks, Tess. Uh, anybody, do you have any question for Tess before I say goodbye to Tess? Anything about Devs 14 or about Sustainable Kingston? You can you can type your question in the chat box. Um, I'll type my email in the chat box as well if anyone thinks of questions later. It's just my name at sustainablekingston.com. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tess, for coming. And I mean, feel free to hang around, stay. But uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure you have other things to do. I think uh, I think I got some things to wrap up this week before the the holidays. So I think I'll head out. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Thanks once again for coming. Thank you. Yes, we'll be in yeah, touch. Thank I'm you. Sure. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. Bye. Okay, so hi everyone. If you came late, uh, my name is Baitosh Kumar, and uh, uh, I'm also here with Mark Eprek, who So we are kind of running the course together. And Susan and Carrie are here, so they are, work in the Dev's main office, so you might need to get in touch with them over the summer months, so I just wanted to introduce them. And Barbara, our departmental administrator, is also here. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go over the course. So I have a slide uh, presentation that, uh, that I'll pull up and kind of go over the course quickly, and then if you have any questions, uh, we can answer them. So just give me a minute. Okay, so uh, so DEPS 410 and 411 are core requisite course. So it's it's a um, nine units in total. So they go together for admin reasons. I'll explain later. We have kind of split it up into two courses. So 410 uh, runs during the summer months, and 411 is the fall term post placement seminar course uh, in development studies. But you have to do both the courses. So in terms of the course requirement, uh, we, you can do your work study placement. So the, the main idea behind this course is that till now you have been learning about development uh, theory and concepts and issues in the classroom. And here is an opportunity actually to kind of go and practice development and see how things are work, how organizations uh, work on different issues and, and bridge that gap between classroom learning and, and the real world. So that's the main idea behind, behind this work study placement course. So usually students do it in the summer months after the third year. But if you are in fourth year, uh, we can do it. We can also create a separate section if you want to do it during the fall term. Those are rare things, but if they are pressing needs, you have a lovely opportunity or something is happening, you want to do it later, that's also possible. But usually most of the students do it. It's really work, it works well if you do it during, during the summer months after the fall term. Uh, and Location, it can be anywhere in the world. It 
you can do it here in Kingston or you can do it in Canada, you can go abroad, provided the place or the country or the region is not on the travel advisory list of uh, Foreign Affairs Canada. So Mark, uh, you checked with John Pierce uh, about this summer. So can students do the internship uh, abroad this year? Okay, so um, he was a bit vague on that. The way I asked the question was, if people are returning to their home in a different country, that's perfectly fine. Then they can do whatever. It's, uh, it's not something that Queens has any say about. You're going home to your country, uh, that's fine. But as for Canadian students traveling, then he wasn't clear. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's something we have to do more research on. Yeah. And it's and, a spirit. Yeah, I mean, it could be a government of Canada thing too. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so obviously the situation is very fluid, so we'll have to wait and see. So, but if you're planning, plan for uh, for a local, either Kingston or Canadian internship, or if, you, uh, um, <clears throat> if your home is, uh, is outside of Canada, you can think about a placement there too. So we also... Uh, a little particular about the kind of work because the idea behind uh, this course is to expose you to development work so uh, ideally a work on a project or projects where there's a, some kind of an end end uh, product is something we are looking for in short we don't uh, want you to end up doing photocopies and <laughs> licking envelopes right. uh, the duration is 10 weeks so uh, the, your placement should be 10 weeks and the way we count 10 weeks is 35 hours per week into 10 and you can spread it out for example if you're doing part-time if you want to uh, combine with part-time employment that is also possible provided in uh, uh, altogether it's 350 hours of work i'll quickly go through the timeline of how this uh, for some reason my okay here yeah. so to get into the course uh, you have to uh, submit a petition that's due on 29th of january and i'll go over the petition requirements uh, we'll let you know within a week or so if you are admitted so the main idea behind the petition is to work you it's not to reject you but work with you to make sure the kind of work you're proposing to do meets our course requirement safety requirement etc uh, so it's it's a combination either we create some internship like for example sustainable kingston that Tess, Tess was talking about and you are free to contact organizations so, and and find something that is suitable of uh, of uh, interest to you so you submit a petition of entry based on the kind of research you have done you don't have to have a confirmed uh, placement by then but uh, something to show that you have kind of work made contact with the organization there's a possibility of uh, you a high possibility of you getting an internship there then february uh, to march we have pre-departure orientation so we go over questions of ethics course requirements how to keep journals safety requirement etc so that's covered during our orientation meeting so you'll see that this is a kind of odd kind of course even when before you are admitted into the course we start doing work for this course and it's almost a year uh, from end to the finish so you'll be spending a lot of time together so we also want to build a community part of uh, the idea behind pre-departure meeting is to bring you together to share your experiences and and uh, work as 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 collab collaborative partners so that's uh, that's going to happen between february and march and then in march uh, uh 10th of march your first assignment is due for the course and that's a pre-departure research paper 
And the idea behind this assignment is to prepare you for your placement. So you do research on the organization and you write up a short research paper. And organizations have really appreciated when our students have gone, uh, having done their homework. And they, I mean, some of them have remarked, you are the first student who have come prepared, who knows what our organization does, because so much of our time is spent in teaching students uh, about the organization, the kind of work we are doing. So it kind of really creates a good impression. So that's the idea behind this, uh, this assignment is to prepare you, prepare you for your internship. Then uh, in April, uh, there's kind of uh, various kind of paperwork. So there's a work study contract that you have to uh, sign. So it's a contract between devs, you, and the organization and essentially the contract is to protect you so that uh, they don't say after two weeks of your internship that you don't no longer uh, require your, uh, your your services so that's essentially so that you have some kind of protection that's why we have this contract and then there's a ministry of education form that you have to sign so this is about uh, workplace accident insurance program so if something happens to you while you're doing your internship. If you are it's accident or injury, uh, there's a protection that Ministry of Education performs, uh, 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 provides. So that's, and it's free of cost, you don't have to pay. And this is something that organization also likes, that they don't have, they are not liable, they don't have to provide for the accident insurance. And then there's OCAS, which stands for Off-Campus Safety Policy. So if you're going abroad or if you're going uh, to a place where the risk is higher than the normal risk, then you have to complete an off-campus safety record uh, form. So that uh, should be done March and April first week. And then May to August is when you do, will, you'll be doing your placement. This is a period where you also will keep a journal and, and uh, there would be chat room. Mark, do you want to explain a little bit about how the journal and the chat room would work? Yes, sure. So the journal will be a monthly written exercise where you reflect on your experience that week or maybe the broader view, uh, what your work is like, what your relationship with uh, working in the community, what, you know, what issues come up. And then the pre-departure um, seminar meetings that we'll be having, um, you know, we'll be talking a lot about that different issues and kind of things that we might encounter. For example, what kind of um, web uh, presence does the organization have or the images that they use? Are they, uh, you know, are they causing the problems? It can help them, right? So that if they, it would be really great to have an organization and do a fantastic work with really problematic images. So that it's a self reflection kind of thing. There's no right or wrong. They're just looking for, uh, you know, your thoughtfulness about the experience. So there's that. And then because this year, so many people um, were doing online, you know, remote kind of work. Uh, it, was, it was a little bit different than in the past, where you out there you know, in Bolivia or Zimbabwe or something like that, right? And lots of people. Um, so we, we changed it a little bit. So it's not just the journal, but we're going to also meet on a regular basis. That's the chat um, that Tosh was talking about. But it'll just be a kind of uh, Drop in and every week, one of you will say, uh, you know, charge a specific question that uh, you know, we need to see again, you know, reflect on. No right or wrong answer, but we're looking for thoughtfulness. And uh, this is also kind of uh, a practice you know, uh, to maintain a sense of feeling you know, in this uh, one period together. And you can help each other. Okay. It's, uh... And thanks, thanks, Mark. So, I mean, one as Mark was saying, one of uh, one of the things students felt uh, in Devs for four eleven about last year's experience was uh, that they felt isolated. So, one of the reasons why we are 
kind of having uh, trying to bring, bring the group together is through chat room and informals so that you're able to connect with others kind of hear a little bit about what they're doing and there are a lot of similar issues that might come up so you kind of share and explore and 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 see how to uh, make the best of our experience so anyway going back to the timeline so may june is when uh, you do your internship so uh, so the 10 weeks should be fulfilled within this time period you can start early you can start immediately after your exam finishes uh, first of may and then complete your 10 weeks uh, or you can start later in june and then finish so it's entirely up to you and the organization so we don't have any particular uh, requirement as far as that is concerned but obviously it will be good if you kind of we all overlap so uh, even if you're not doing your placement or even if you have finished your placement uh, it would be good that you kind of participate in chat room and share your experience etc and that what happens is that obviously August uh, your 410 course because uh, in summer you'll be enrolled in DEFS 410 the work study placement course six units it finishes and what we do at this period of time is give you a pass grade uh, a temporary because the course is not really over yet right the course gets over when you finish 411 so we give you a temporary pass grade and this is to ensure that uh, you're not kicked out of the de dean's list or if you have scholarship or if you're applying for a grad school, uh, incomplete uh, looks bad on the transcript. It seems you have not completed the course. So that's why the reason we give you a temporary pass grade. And then fall term, you come back and enroll in DEPS 411. So, what is really unique about, about our work study placement course, unlike a lot of other departments, is that we have a post placement seminar course. So we, we de devote a full term on reflection because we realize that the biggest learning actually takes place when you come back from experience. Uh, this is when you come back with questions and puzzles and things don't fit in, you want to talk about your experience. And here is a forum where uh, you can safely in an environment, in a very supportive environment, kind of talk about, uh, reflect, do some readings that kind of con contextualizes your experience so you kind of make sense because a lot of times it becomes, especially if it's international placement, it becomes quite uh, trying to understand and contextualize your experience. So that's the main idea behind this course. And it's a unique course. Uh, uh, I don't think any other DEVS program runs a course like this. So, and what would happen in course is that we'll do some debrief exercise, we'll uh, do some readings, uh, case studies and then you also uh, do presentations about your experience uh, so you come up with a reading uh, that will go with your presentation a presentation memo uh, which everyone reads so in a in a sense you take over the classroom so you become the teachers for that particular week or that particular slot of time when you're doing your presentation and it's it's great in that sense that we learn so much from each other's experiences. They, you'll develop an in-depth knowledge about the organization, the kind of work they are doing, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, teach us about that. Uh, so there are a few other assignments associated with 411. So when you finish 411 in December, we'll give you a final grade, uh, which is accumulative of your, all the assignments you have done pre-departure essay, uh, journal, chat room participation, your presentation, participation in class, uh, multimedia assignment uh, in 411, final report, etc. And then your temporary grade for 410 will change into a letter grade. So both your 410 and 411 grade would be the same. So it's a bit confusing, but uh, any questions, clarification about this, about the timeline? I cannot see the chat with my slideshow. So if you have, if you want to just speak up. Uh, 
Um, no. I have one question. Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Okay, so the petition in the beginning, um, where did you like submit that petition to? Sorry, I was not able to hear you clearly. Can you hear me better now? Yes, yeah. Um, for the petition in the beginning, where do we submit that to? So I, I'm just going to uh, go, uh, go over the petitions. So what are the requirements? Yeah, so I'll just go over that. Any other questions? Okay, so how to enroll in the uh, course. So this course is for devs major and medial. So you have to be in the devs major or medial program in year three or above. So your petition should be uh, two to three pages long. And it's due on 29th January before 4.30 p.m. And it should be emailed to Professor Mark Kaprecht. And his email is here. We also have a placement handbook, which will, uh, so all this information will also be, be available in the placement handbook. So we'll put it up on our website, or if you require one, you can email Susan in the DEVS main office. And after you submit your petition within a week, uh, we'll let you know our decision. and then you can register as a spring or we'll register you as a spring summer student. So uh, it, what we require in the, in, in the petition is a short, uh, your short bio indicating your educational and career goals and overview of any overseas experience. And this is particularly relevant if you are going abroad, but this year most likely we'll be doing a domestic uh, preference. And the idea behind this is that we want you to think it's a unique opportunity, as Tess was mentioning, uh, in terms of uh, 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 kind of figuring out what kind of work you want to do or grad school. So it, we don't want you to jump uh, at the first opportunity that comes, comes your way. Kind of think about what your long-term goals, uh, both educational and career goals are, and how does this experience match up, match up with that. And Paratash, we should add in there, and not just any overseas experience, but any experience in the NGO sector or uh, volunteering, I think would be relevant. Sure. Okay, so we can we can change that. So not only on the overseas experience, but uh, any experience with uh, working with the NGO or the volunteer sector. Uh, and once again, 420 doesn't apply, so you can ignore that. Then location and overviews. So name and function of the organization. Uh, and it's okay if, you, for example, if you have more than one organizations where you are kind of uh, pursuing your placement, so mention both of them. Uh, contact person at the organization, possible start date, uh, facilities and resources that would be available to you at your work study location. And once again, this is important this year, whether you'll be working remotely or uh, will you be working uh, at, uh, at the facility itself, what kind of uh, uh, facility will be available to you. And a description of how you think your work study uh, placement will provide a development oriented experience in relation to uh, your program and what you hope to learn from it. Um, if, for example, if you're going abroad, especially once again, what kind of financial resources will be required to undertake the placement and mm -hmm. how these will be met. And once again, these are exercises, these are questions which help you to think about because in past we found that students had planned out, arranged everything and then right towards the end, uh, a week before they were going to depart, they suddenly realized, oh my God, living expenses so much in, in uh, Cape Town or Johannesburg. I don't have that kind of resources. So it's an ex exercise in budget making too, where uh, 
what will it cost, uh, how much resources you have, where will you get, what additional funding you require, for example. And then uh, I have some ideas about where you can find uh, and how to go about researching, for example, your your opportunities so these are some idealists for example is one website where you can you can look for you can do searches for placement opportunities that are available uh, both in canada and abroad eldis is a website which is maintained by university of sussex uh, development studies program so university of sussex development studies program is quite massive i mean the development studies program is like university in itself and they run this website uh, called eldis which has a lot of resources both in terms of doing research but also about placement and job opportunities uh, Past Steps 411 Students is another uh, source uh, because last year was kind of unique. Uh, we were hit with COVID at the last minute. But in spite of that, we had about 10 or 11 students who did their placement. And all of them were here in Canada, quite a few of them uh, in Kingston. So for example, two students did their placement with Keys which is Kingston Employment, uh, Youth Employment Services. And uh, their project was on looking at a uh, uh, labor market for refugees and recent immigrants. And the second part of the project was on uh, researching uh, uh, kind of uh, racism, again, uh, Asians uh, in light of COVID. Uh, so that uh, as two students took the internship here, uh, one once again was with, uh, one student was with uh, uh, Sustainable Kingston, another student worked on a farm uh, near Coburg. Uh, so this farm is kind of uh, trying to work on uh, regenerative agriculture and set up an institute. So her, uh, her internship was in terms of locate, locating native variety, variety of uh, plants, uh, ways of doing agriculture, which is uh, restores biodiversity, is regenerative, and then also researching on funding opportunities, how to set, set, up, in, set up a learning institute on the farm. Um, <laughs> Uh, then there were students who worked with at Queens itself. So one student did work with AMS, and I think she was the social affairs commissioner. And part of her portfolio was kind of looking at uh, the impact of COVID on BIPOC students. Uh, also, the second part of her uh, project was uh, on the food, AMS food bank. So an overall policy, not only how to run the food bank, but the kind of larger issues surrounding food bank uh, policy, etc. So uh, these are DEVS 411 students. So obviously they have uh, uh, they have developed uh, contact with the organization, and they are students uh, in our database. So we can put you in touch with students who did their placement uh, prior to last summer. So some of them have uh, have good contacts, or we can tell you about organizations where they work. So get in touch with me, and I can provide you uh, with those resources. Some of the organizations. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I was just going to add. I keep tabs on the local media a little bit these days, and I, I see opportunities advertised like. For example, the other day, the, the city of uh, Kingston was looking for volunteers for contact tracing for COVID. Uh, you know, who knows what your interests are. But there's also um, another farm not too far away from here, in, uh, organic uh, community shared agriculture. So it's a kind of radical uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> alternative to the production system. So that, that's development. So I guess. What we're saying too is that development is, as you know, by this time, is really uh, wide open. And we've also had in the past, I think, go to HIV/AIDS uh, regional services, 
Uh, there's many in, in Kingston. Uh, so you can consider staying in Kingston for the summer. If that's not something you haven't done. It's a lot of complaint. So, Artosh, I'm going to ask you a question. Just to make sure that you're uh, clear on my understanding of this. And I think it might come from you. You don't care if you get paid, right? No, not at all. I mean, it's, it's no. uh, yeah. I mean, if they get pay, yeah. paid, yeah. It's yeah, icing yeah, I the cake. remember, wasn't it a couple of years ago? The World Bank was up here recruiting, and they, I mean, a couple of years, could be 10 years ago. But the World Bank had uh, paid internships in New York City. Did any of our students do that? So, so we had a fairly good relationship with World Bank. So we had uh, for about five or six years, uh, we had students regularly going to Washington to work. And then, uh, and then with UNDP New York. But uh, the UN organizations have changed their policies. So now they're essentially looking for graduate students unless until we have some very strong contacts who are willing to bend the rule a little bit, uh, which usually ha happens in, uh, in, uh, not in, not in European countries, so North American countries, but in, in Asia, Africa, in one of their offices, they are willing to take in students. The others, uh, and then there are organizations. So for example, one of our students last year did uh, a project with uh, Danin Deshpande Innovation uh, Fund. So it's, uh, they sub also support, they provide funding for students to do projects. So she did work on developing uh, a kind of platform where elderly, especially during COVID can, uh, can communicate with their family and uh, others, sim other similarly placed elderly people in care homes. So there are opportunities uh, through through the uh, uh, Deshpande Fund, and then there are ca campus organizations like Cupid, QHO, Queen, uh, Queens Project in International Development, Queens Health Outreach, Engineers Without Borders, ASEC. Uh, I know this year Cupid and QHO, they are not doing their, their overseas project, but there might be other opportunities. So it might be worth exploring those opportunities. Um, in past, students have done work with organizations such as Canada World Youth, Canadian Crossroads International, Canadian Feed the Children, Canadian Hunger Foundation, Care Canada, CUSO, The Hunger Project, Foundations for Sustainable Development. So some of them were in Canada, some of these organizations work abroad. So um, Kairos Canada, Mining Watch Canada, Oxfam, and Oxfam have, has offices in Ottawa, Montreal, uh, Toronto, uh, Vancouver, so you can, if you are from those cities, you can approach the offices in in your uh, place of stay. Polaris Institute, a VSO Voluntary Services Overseas. Uh, so they, these are just kind of sample of uh, projects. Uh, organizations where students have done work. And as Mark, as you see, Hars is there. So what I can do is if you want a copy of this slide, just send me an email and I can send you the slides so you can look at these. So these also have links to the organization so you can look at their website, etc. So and that's... The, uh, sorry, sorry there's the, web, uh, the Canadian Council for International Cooperation. Uh, you probably have that one. So that's got like, an, that's an umbrella organization. With exactly. Uh, or a hundred uh, different places. Um, so that's a good one-stop uh, place. So I'll just pull up their website. So 
So meanwhile, if you have any other I'm sorry, I just saw your message, uh, Mark, uh, about the slides. Were they too small? Were, were uh, they difficult yeah. to see? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was on the slideshow mode. I was just wondering um, what the deadline is for confirming our placement. Mark, do you want to? Confirming a placement. Um, I don't know if we actually set the deadline on that. Um, we, so it, you'll have an idea where you want to go and hopefully you'll have communicated in by the time of your letter of petition and then once you're accepted into the course, uh, then you should immediately move on that to get it confirmed. Um, so I don't know if we actually set a, a hard date on that, but obviously in the sooner the better. Yeah, in practicality, um, one of the deadlines is the add um, for a spring term course, which is typically like the 10th of May. So kind of on the outside, that would be um, the absolute deadline of, is it a go or a no-go? Right, that's the absolute latest. And you should, uh, in theory, you know, be able to move on that uh, in February uh, and get every, everything lined up. Okay, thank you. So I was looking at uh, their website, so they have changed their name. It's called Cooperation Canada. So I'll just pull up their website one sec. And there's a fee. So this is their website. So, it's, so I think that they've changed their name and advertise or opportunities so you have to become a member to view either to ad advertise or view the job postings because earlier they used oh. to be i remember they used to be internship opportunities as well i wonder if this is something the department can become a member and then students can come in and uh, research it through devs yeah we can we because can it would, investigate yeah, it could be a good opportunity, especially for students who are graduating and if they have job postings which they cannot access. We have a question from Megan asking, what happens if you don't get into the internship that you're applying for? So, Paratash, I think you have experience with that. <laughs> Exactly. So we, we try and work with you and it happens a lot. So for example, you apply and you don't get in. So it's a good idea to have a couple of op backup options. We can also help you. We have contacts, for example, with local organizations uh, and obviously international organizations. And we can also help you uh, kind of putting you uh, uh, we can put you in touch with past students or organizations. Um, so between different faculty members and past participants and students, uh, we can, we're pretty sure, confidently can say that we can come up with, uh, with opportunities. For example, Mark Hostetler was running this course last year. And I think most of the opportunities was uh, largely through his initiator. So I'm not sure if Mark is here or not. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, everything changed around uh, in the middle of March. Uh, and a lot of people who had placements um, that were organized in other parts of the world or whatnot uh, weren't able to do those. And we were able to shift uh, 
we were able to find things sort of between their efforts and our efforts. So some of them were able to find things through their own networks and that's a good way to go to um, uh, that's, um, but we can also look for opportunities. It's a possibility. Um, and, and there are things out there, I think is the other thing, uh, to, to, to understand. And it's a, it's a matter of doing a bit of research and, and asking people questions. So. But we went in mid of March, I think we added probably five different placements that hadn't been there from there to when the, the, uh, people started in in May or had to be uh, enrolled in May so and earlier we used to be a lot more uh, proactive in creating opportunities and then uh, we got into a situation where nobody applied but it's kind of uh, organizations were not very happy when they had spent time creating opportunities for us and then nobody applied yeah. so Sarah uh, When emailing, getting in touch with organizations, is there a specific template you would like us to follow? Or is it whatever you think best? Uh, it, Mark, do you have any uh, suggestions for that? Uh, well, uh, I mean, I one of the things, <laughs> one one yeah. of the things which I suggest is that do uh, research the organization carefully. I mean, one of the things which organizations don't like is a very generic kind of email which students send to a number of different uh, uh, different organizations. So if you do research on the organization, find out what they are doing. And then you, if you can state how your skill sets match with some of the projects they're doing, where you can fit in, uh, that, that helps a lot because oftentimes, especially uh, NGOs are not thinking about how to fit in a student. Uh, and if you have something specific, it might uh, set a light bulb and say, oh, that seems interesting. You can definitely get uh, get student working on a project. So you have, if you have something much more concrete to offer, state your skill sets, you can, uh, that would be better. But definitely it would create, creates a good impression if you have done the organization, if you, uh, if, if you know what the organization is working on. So, yeah, that's, and, that's really uh, critical. I'm just going to emphasize what Peritosh is uh, saying there, that it's work for the NGO to deal with these incoming emails and cold calls and such. So you, have, you need to be respectful of their time. And one way to show that respect is to, to do the preliminary research and to have a vision of how you're going to help them achieve their mission. Right, and not just they're going to help you, and, and and so that's that's the key. But we're not going to dictate how you write the letter. That's up to you, and that's part of the learning process as well. So, um, but yeah, don't don't be sending out mass emails and you know, <laughs> burning the the group that uh, you want to so called help. So yeah. there was, sorry, Mark. I, I was just gonna add. I think. I think. Um, yeah, do, like both Mark and Paratosh have said, do your research ahead of time, and then after you've done that, um, if you can find somebody who's willing to communicate with you, having you know, trying to have a conversation with them to see if it's a fit, so that it's kind of a mutual sort of thing that you know, asking questions and from a place of of that, that starts with a an understanding of what people are up to, um, to the extent you can find it online and wh wherever else, I think is maybe a useful way to make a connection that, that will work better. Uh, so I, I just add that. And I think the other thing uh, is to add is that there are resources um, at the university. So you can do uh, things in the career center uh, for example, on uh, on networking and those sorts of things, there's workshops that you can that that could help with figuring out how to approach those sorts of 
uh, communications. So I see Anjali had a question. Okay, Barbara, you answered her. Great, thank you. Any other questions? about the course. So one thing I forgot to mention was that if you are in, uh, if you're in your fourth year, or uh, if you're not planning to come back to the campus in the fall term, uh, we have an option of uh, uh, doing it remotely. So you can enroll in DEVS 502. And this option is especially uh, open to fourth year students who do their placement and then uh, uh, start work or do something else and they don't want to come back to campus just for one course. So they can enroll in DEVS 502, uh, directed reading course, and then complete the requirement for the work study placement course. So I'll type in my email address here. So if you need a copy of these slides, this email will also have the recording of the session available. Oops, sorry. So here is my email. Anything else about the course? So anybody who has done some work with the organization and quite keen on going back to that organization this summer? Anyone who has something lined up? No. Yes, yeah, so working on international art. So it's, I think we don't have a very clear direct, Anjali's question was, are working at international organizations dependent on travel restrictions? Uh, so both travel restrictions and what the, university policy is on international travel. So things are quite fluid right now. Uh, but just to, uh, in case uh, Anjali wasn't here at the beginning, um, we've tried to get something from Queens on, on, in terms of policy there. The only thing that's clear is if your home is outside of Canada. You can travel to your home and you can do an internship. That seems to be uh, uncontroversial. But to, if you're a Canadian uh, to travel abroad right now, there it's not clear. And hopefully that will all get uh, clarified in the next little, little bit. Yeah, I think um, it, it, it is clear in the sense that, that until things change, you can't do it. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, what is what's so what's clear is is that that until it, first government rules change about whether you can travel, and then second, uh, the Queen's uh, University policies in relation to health and safety uh, are are catch up to that. Uh, you won't be able to do international placements. Um, so I guess there's uh, the answer is still we d we don't know at this point and that's that's just a fact of where we all are right now so if there are no other questions We can end the session.
any other last minute thoughts so barbara uh, do you think the placement handbook would be accessible to the students uh, later this month or sometime my expectation is um, we're just trying to make it in an accessible format um, okay. that we would finish that uh, either tomorrow or Thursday at the latest. Um, and we'll post that on um, the website as well as um, I think we have a list of everyone who's here so we can send that to you as well. Well, that would be wonderful. Great. Thanks, Barbara. So we have a fairly uh, detailed placement handbook where all this information, including details about the assignments, work requirement, contract, everything is there. So all you need, all the information you need is in the placement ha handbook. So as Barbara mentioned, so next week onwards, it will be available on our website. So you can download it from there. If not, get in touch with uh, with uh, Susan or Barbara. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mark, Barbara, Susan, and Carrie. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And and Mark. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll see you later. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. And, Bye. And,